If Open RAN is to play a major role in future mobile network architectures and help operators benefit from best of breed innovators, the development of a strong ecosystem will be vital. Uh, to discuss this topic and its particular relevance to the potential of the RAN Intelligent Controller, or RIC, I'm talking today with Lorcan Burke, Director of RAN at VMware, and Holger Erkens, Senior Partner Manager at Deutsche Telekom. Uh, gentlemen, great to talk to you both today. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, Lorcan, let's start with you. Um, to put this discussion into context, can you explain why the industry is looking to disaggregate the RAN? And can you outline the role the ORAN Alliance architectural components, in particular the role of the RIC and its supporting R apps and X apps will play? Sure, thanks, uh, Ray. So uh, the, the, the main components that we've been talking about in ORAN <clears throat> end up being the, the radio units and, and the, the DU and CU parts. So that's the bulk of where the discussions end up happening around the disaggregation of the radio from the baseband, in, in effect. And then the other control points, uh, the real-time and non-real-time RAN intelligent controller points, so the RICs. Um, bro broadly speaking, the near-real-time RIC is doing the job of uh, exposing the, uh, the near-real-time RIC exposes the scheduler so people can do smarter things on the, uh, on the, the, the uh, digital side and on radio processing. And the non-real-time RIC is really around how do you evolve uh, SON and make the overall management of the overall radio network easier. Okay, and uh, Holger, you've been looking at the use cases associated with the RIC and managed a number of trials for Deutsche Telekom in this area. Um, looking at this from an operator perspective, which RIC use cases are relevant for Deutsche Telekom? Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question, Ray. So indeed, we started to closely monitor the market on RIG platforms, X and RFs last year to create a clearer view for our next steps. And I can tell you about a couple of our learnings. First, we need to differentiate between non and near RT RIG, as uh, Lorcan pointed out before, yeah, so where we face a very different situation. On the non RT RIG, it is more replacing traditional use cases, while the near RT RIG is the new kid on the block. When I think about use cases for the non RT RIG, we differentiate again between RAN automation, which is more classical SON use cases, and a couple of innovative use cases that we have identified until now. For RAN automation, we initially uh, prioritized automatic neighbor relations, PCI optimization, and energy savings. While in the area of innovative use cases, we are interested in more evolution for particular use cases like network coverage and capacity optimization, in particular, traffic steering and load balancing, AI ML-based optimizations like uh, anomaly detection or self-healing, energy savings, uh, for example, carrier management, or B2B use cases like uh, SLA slice assurance. Uh, the non rig purpose will as well be to orchestrate the network by injection of RAM policies into near rt rig via the A1 interface. And when we associate AI and L with the rig, then we see the non RT rig providing the uh, model training while the near RT rig executes inferencing based on, on the trained models. The data gathered, therefore, is currently embedded in the RIP, but uh, could be of use for others as well. Thus, a standardized framework to store and share data may make sense. The near RT rig serves more innovative use cases, and by nature, we need to give innovation time to be proven. Yeah? And uh, we don't see the killer use case for X apps and the near RT rig already being found. But we think that in case the near RT rig and related X apps take care of uh, radio resource management functions, this could really add value over traditional systems. Yeah? And in that area, we see functionalities like massive MIMO higher layer coordination or enhanced means of adaptive QoS, QoE control. Okay, and so what have you been able to demonstrate so far from the trials you've undertaken? Uh, you know, what are the key takeaways and, and what should the ecosystem focus on in terms of further developments? Well, we make some progress in that area and we were able to show this in last year's autumn breakfast as well but need to work on a couple of challenges. Yeah. When looking, for example, at the near RT rig, we still have uh, concerns on the E2 interoperability. So E2 service models are already standardized, but standardized in an open way with a lot of room for interpretation. Uh, if the rig 
is taking a decision, then proper interaction with the CU and the DU needs to be proven. To achieve more specific solutions, vendors' proprietary service models could probably be standardized in the future, but we need to ensure multi-vendor aspects are supported with good test specifications and implementations. Solutions should be brought to the field and we need to move from plug fest to real trial deployment. We should start to find out how XAPs and RAPs work in real scenarios. Besides gaps in interfaces, um, the lack of proper conflict mitigation and a multi-vendor setup is by far the greatest concern we have. And standardization is in an early stage here or not even considered yet. Uh, we see multiple levels of conflicts that are imaginable, for example, between platforms and nodes or between different simultaneously active control loops. And uh, to solve this issue, we think it needs to be addressed in, by various measures. Just to name a few, we think we need proper planning for X and RAP deployment, considering the parameters influenced and measured by each X and RAP. We think limitation to a few in best case non-conflicting X RAPs would be helpful. We need safety functions and backup functionalities built in to be put in place in, in case of service degradation resulting from unstable loops. And uh, Last but for sure not least, thorough testing in multi XRF scenarios is super important deployment precondition. Yeah. Uh, in the end, we think that um, these functions should be integrated rather in the platform than in the XOR. Okay, so uh, it sounds like there's already been quite a lot of work there on what the, uh, the X apps and the R apps might be able to do. Uh, now we've discussed a number of use cases specific to the RIC and those apps. And it's clear that for any successful implementation of this architecture, uh, we're going to require a shift from what has been essentially a single vendor environment to one based heavily on ecosystem collaboration. Uh, Lorcan, are you seeing the levels of innovation that you hoped for? And are you seeing new players come into the industry as the barriers to entry come down? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Ray, I, I think it's uh, as to whether there's been enough, um, like a lot of uh, introductions of new technology in our domain, it, it comes in waves. So we tend to get a lot of people fairly enthusiastic at the start, realize maybe it's a bit harder than they thought. Some drop out and some persevere. Um, it's it's also a question of being, being able to apply these types of interfaces, the, these ecosystems to something useful that delivers enough benefit that it's worth paying for, right? So um, I think w when you look for, th for the things that we need to do with the network, whether it's being more efficient in using energy, which is a very broad topic, or uh, improving service performance, maybe for short form videos, the these, ha these will need the use of RICs, as well as a number of applications working together um, to, to optimize the network and optimize performance, and often a conflicting way, and then you need a way to figure out how to, how to resolve conflict and deliver a consistent performance experience to those networks or to those services. So the, the ecosystem's growing, I think. Um, I think there's been easier emphasis maybe on the non-real-time RIC. And as Holger said, it's uh, maybe a little harder to do the, the near real-time parts. But working together, you can definitely deliver benefit in, I'll say, short short-form video performance, steering traffic, towards uh, edge caches, improving end-to-end -end performance for some services. And then using the two together, you can power down radios, steer traffic to different parts of the network, or, uh, or use the overall network more efficiently, including how, how you work with the uh, existing uh, RAN components. So I think the ecosystem's growing, needs to be encouraged. Um, and uh, working with Holger, I think we, we, we do see people at least being willing to try stuff out you know, the I-14Y as an as a, as a environment for trying some of these things, uh, coordinating some of the research centers uh, at the tail end of academia and getting them access to live environments for testing things. I think that that encourages the ecosystem. Okay, thanks, Lorcan. Now, of course, you know, what the whole ecosystem wants to know is what do the operators need? So, uh, Holger, what would Deutsche Telekom like to see from the ecosystem with regards to run intelligent controller as things progress? Well, we still have a 
concern on ecosystem fragmentation in the area of RICS and XRAPs, or standardization gaps and technical issues like conflict mitigation, as mentioned by Lorcan, keep us away from easily deployable multi-vendor solutions. So, therefore, more engagement in work groups from CUDU and RIC vendors would be appreciated to achieve very clear standards and enable a maximum of product permutations. Moreover, testing in labs is limited in interfaces currently, so we need to find ways to understand the performance of the algorithms behind the XAPs and the RFs as well uh, before we can bring this to field deployment. In the area of test equipment, we see that use cases are implemented in individual ways today, and that requires a lot of customization before testing can start. With growing maturity of standards and implementations, we hope to come to agreed ways of implementing test cases, which would tremendously ease the lab work around RIG and XRFs. Yes, that would make a lot of sense. I'm sure a lot of people in the industry would also like to see that happen. Um, and now looking a little bit further into the future, I mean, things are changing very quickly in the industry, but uh, you know, what needs to happen next uh, to drive the further adoption of Open RAN to accelerate developments? Uh, Holger, let's start with you first. On our side, I see us engaging currently, particularly in three areas. So once again, thinking about the area of RIG and XAPs and RAPs, we will continue exploration and have an eye on it, be it with internal POCs or in plug fests such as the global O1 Splink plug fest uh, currently ramping up. We see us uh, engaging in real deployments now, as we announced during MWC. We will start this journey now with Nokia and Mavenir. And uh, I see us also engaging strongly on the end of certification and with our i 14 y lab. The ecosystem needs to ease the pain of integration and in multi-vendor solutions, and we drive that in our i 14 y lab together with the communities. Okay, and uh, Lorcan, for you, uh, what do you think needs to happen next to accelerate open RAN developments? So I, I, I think it's sharing the learnings from the community around what's worked and what's not worked. Um, you know, we've, we've worked in US operators, we've worked with European and Asian operators, uh, getting the, the communities sharing, not best practice, but learnings, right? So at least what's worked, what hasn't worked. The, on the RIC particularly, or, or the RICs, how the applications work together, the types of conflict mitigation, access, often simple things, maybe like but large amounts of data to train algorithms to get better understanding of KPI performance. And I, I do think there's nothing like uh, trying it in the real world. So I think we do we do have to take things like uh, an evolution of Oran Town or other clusters in networks and actually in, in decent scale figure out what you know, how we deploy, how we lifecycle, how the interaction between applications work. How do we secure these applications? People talk about security. They often uh, end up meaning, how do I do code inspection or how do I actually control the content of applications to avoid damage to the network? So I think trying these these things out in, in mid-level scale, sharing the learnings as quickly as we can, which is really the purpose of the ORAN Alliance, purpose of Telecom Info Project and the purpose of these uh, community labs like I14Y and, and some of the research tracks. So I think j just getting that, that done quicker, I think that moves it away from being a maybe a five-year problem to being a two or three-year problem. So at least we can, if we work together the right way, we can probably save ourselves a couple of years to get these technologies into, into network. Yep, absolutely. And of course, it's not just about the uh, development and expansion of the ecosystem. It's about collaboration within that ecosystem as it grows as well. Uh, okay, Lorcan, Holger, thanks very much for your insights today and for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ray. Thank you.